right? We're going to talk about roots and radical expressions. So if a to the n equals b, uh, with a and b being real numbers, and n is a positive integer, then a is the nth root of b. And so what that is, is that's just saying if I take the, the nth root of b, I'm going to get a. Okay. Um, if n is odd, so if I have an odd uh, root here, one real nth root of the nth root of b. So if, if n is odd here, so like the cube root, the fifth root, the seventh root, I'm only going to have one real answer. <clears throat> if n is even, so the square root, fourth root, sixth root, then I have two nth roots of the nth root of b, which is plus or minus the nth root of b. Because remember, uh, if I look at the square root of 4, so if I look here at the square root of 4, I know that that's 2, right? 2 times 2 is 4, so 2 squared equals 4, but negative 2 squared also equals 4. So this actually gives me a plus or minus there. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to look here at uh, our first example. We're going to be looking at taking the cube root. And so the first one is I have a fraction, and then the second one is I have a decimal. We'll kind of talk about each individually. So if I have a fraction, what I can do is I can actually separate this up into the cube root of each part. So I can take the cube root of the numerator and the cube root of the denominator. So the cube root of 1 is 1. The cube root of 27 is 3. So the cube root of 1 27th is 1 third. <clears throat> Now, when we're dealing with decimals, uh, decimals are a little bit harder because it's just a little bit harder to visualize. So when we're looking at this, look at your uh, index. So maybe we should talk real quick about, about when we're looking at a radical. Okay. So the index is what type of root are you taking? So uh, the number out front here is our index. Uh, if you don't see one, it is an implied 2. We just don't write it. Uh, radicand is the number inside that I'm taking the root of, the nth root of, and then you have the radical symbol. <clears throat> so what's going to happen is you're going to look at your index. And your index is going to be very useful because what it's going to do is you're going to look at your index and then how many decimal points you have. So what you're going to do is you're going to divide the number of decimal points that you have by the index. And that tells you how many decimal points you have in your answer. Okay? So I have three decimal points. Three decimal points divided by three is one. So I'm going to have one decimal here. And now I just look at the cube root of the actual value. So I'm going to look at the cube root of eight. Well, the cube root of eight is two. So the cube root of 0 0.008 <coughs> is 0.2. Okay, um, we're going to look at uh, example two. We're going to look at some, some principal roots here. Um, kind of the idea is that we're going to take the cube root or the square root uh, of these. Okay, so now I have uh, the cube root of negative eight. Well, um, I can take the cube roots, uh, or the odd roots of negative numbers, and I will get a value here. So the cube root of negative eight is negative two because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals negative 8. And so I have all these pieces here. So that's the last piece. Now, we're going to kind of do the same thing we did over there with this one. So my index, I don't see a number here. So my index is an implied 2. So I'm going to take the 2. And notice here that they put 0 0.04. That's a little bit more formal uh, writing, putting that 0 in front of the decimal. <clears throat> that is not a decimal point, remember. So I look here, I have two decimal points. So that tells me my answer is going to have two divided by two or one decimal point. So now I'm going to look at the square root of four. The square root of four is two. Uh, if we're here, uh, we should probably make this uh, plus or minus 0.2, but we're only going to look at the positive side for right now. Uh, now, the last one is we are looking at, um, here is uh, negative 2 squared. So the first thing I need to do is I need to square negative 2, which gives me 4. Now I have the square root of 4. 
which is two. I'm only looking at the positive side right now. That's that principal side. Uh, understand that most of the time when we're going to look at these, anytime I take the square root or the fourth root, it's plus or minus. Okay, but right now we're just looking at that principal side or that positive side. <clears throat> Okay, so our last thing is, is what happens if I have uh, the nth root of the nth power? Well, the difference comes in is what type of n am I looking at? Am I looking at an odd n? If I'm looking at an odd n, then the answer is just a. If I'm looking at an even n, then the answer is the absolute value of a. So for example, let's say I have the cube root of negative 2 cubed. Well, the cube root of negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 2. But now if I look at this, if I look at the fourth root of negative 2 to the fourth, I don't just get to take those down. Now I have the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. Okay? Because remember what you're going to do is you're going to end up taking the fourth root, or, or the fourth power of negative 2, that gives me 16, the fourth root of 16 is 2. This is only looking at the principal side. Okay? So, so ideally that... Eventually, when we're taking square roots and stuff like that, you're going to say, oh, it's plus or minus. Okay? Uh, we're going to do a little bit of simplifying here, and we're only going to simplify to the, to the positive side there. Um, <clears throat> there. There are some, some pieces there that when you, when you do this, you want to put absolute value around your uh, variable, and that's fine. Um, okay, so the first one is the square root of 16... Uh, x to the eighth, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. When I took the even root here, I had an absolute value. So when we look at this, so the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of x to the eighth is going to be x to the fourth. Now, some of you guys might be asking, well, how did I get that x to the fourth? Well, Remember that this is my index here is an implied 2. And so what's going to happen here is this becomes the square root of 16. And this becomes x to the 8 divided by 2. This is actually using power properties. Um, so we're converting this to uh, that piece there. It, it, you're just going to divide those out. Well, 4 is already positive. x to the 4th is already positive. So we can just leave this as 4x to the 4th. Now, if this was going to be something like, I'm going to erase this real quick, and let's say I change this <coughs> to be a 6. Well, now I would have four, the absolute value of 4x cubed, right? And so now the 4 is already positive, so that's fine. But we want to put an absolute value around the x cubed, because x could be negative 1, and then that would give me a negative value there. So uh, we want to have positive because if I go back to my original here and I plug in negative 1, negative 1 to the 6th power is positive 1. Positive 1 times 16 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. Okay? So anytime you end up with an odd uh, power, you're going to put absolute value around it. Okay? Um, cube roots, fifth roots, seventh roots, doesn't matter. You're just going to take your power and divide it by your index. So this really becomes a to the 6 over 3, b to the 9 over 3, which gives me a squared, b cubed, and there's my final answer. So that's kind of an introduction to roots and radical expressions.